everybody. The networking industry has been on an evolutionary path from monolithic systems towards open, disaggregated, and virtualized infrastructure. This is especially true in the data center. In fact, it's been 23 years since VMware got started and about 10 years since SDN or software defined networking became the big buzzword. Over that period of time, we've gone through multiple generations of silicon. We've seen the arrival of containerized workloads, Kubernetes, major improvements in energy efficiency, the open compute project, and still there's this challenge of stranded resources in the data center. In fact, you could say that the largest hyperscale cloud data centers continue to have an advantage, especially in that area, that they are able to redirect resources more efficiently wherever they're needed, compute resources, storage resources, or networking resources. Today, my colleague Roy Chu and I have the pleasure of speaking with a hot startup in Silicon Valley and really digging into their architecture or vision for the fungible data center. In fact, that's their name, fungible. Thanks, Jim. Well, innovation begins with a great idea or insight into how to solve a problem. With Fungible, the story begins in 2015 when Pradeep Sinhu, the founder and chief scientist of Juniper Networks, and Bertrand Soleil, another Silicon Valley luminary who is perhaps best known for leading the development of Mac OS X and iOS, decided to go all in on a new venture to redesign the data center. Their fundamental building block would be a new data processing unit, or DPU, a so-called third socket after the CPU and GPU. The ambition behind this DPU is to not only deliver an order of magnitude improvement in the execution of data-centric workloads, but to fundamentally change traffic flows throughout a data center. So how is Fungible going to do that? That's the topic of this deep dive conversation today. So far, Fungible has introduced two versions of its DPU. The Fungible F1 DPU, which is a 800 gigabits per second processor for high performance storage, analytics, and security platforms, as well as the Fungible S1 DPU, which is a 200 gigabits per second counterpart, which is optimized for host site use cases, including bare metal virtualization, storage initiator, NFVI, VNF applications, as well as distributed node security. Fungible's first shipping product based on the DPU technology is an NVMe storage cluster in a 2RU form factor. It scales linearly through 30 million IOPS in a single 40RU rack. And the company says its design improves dollar per IOPS significantly by consolidating workloads and increasing the utilization of the storage media. But the ambition is much bigger. Uh, the company is now introducing its full multi-tenant fungible data center platform based on its DPU and true fabric technology, as well as the fungible data center composer orchestration technology, which comes in part from last year's acquisition of the company Cloudistics. Thanks, Roy. Uh, joining us today are Srinidhi Varadarajan, SVP Solutions at Fungible, and previously the founder and CTO of Cloudistics, the startup that was acquired by Fungible last year. Also joining us today is Parta Paila, who comes by way of the Cloudistics acquisition as well. So with that, let's get started with the Q&A. The question and answer timeline is given in the description below, so please feel free to use that to jump ahead or rewind as needed. So Jim and I have tracked Fungible's progress as a company for a while now. First with the launch of the Fungible DPU, followed by the announcement and the launch of the Fungible storage cluster powered by that same DPU, and now the Fungible data center. That's a lot uh, for a startup. So this is pretty audacious. Um, how are you doing this? From the outset, Roy, right? We set out to solve the core challenges posed by modern data-centric workloads with the Fungible DPU. 
the technologies and products we built, such as the fungible storage cluster, are interlocked together to enable business agility, performance, scalability, and security. Along the way, we saw that we had to solve problems faced by on-prem data centers as a whole to realize the vision of delivering the benefits enjoyed by hyperscale operators to data centers of all scales. In 2020, as you know, Roy, we acquired Cloudistics to realize the full potential of the fungible DPU enabled data centers that can handle the most demanding data centric workloads. We began work on the fungible data center several years ago. And to us, it was clear that we had to solve problems faced by on-prem data centers holistically rather than as a set of point products. Our goal here is to make on-prem data centers as easy to use, uh, as agile to changing workloads with high utilization and security and with more performance than public hyperscale operators offer. And we do this while preserving the security of your data behind on-prem security controls. We are finally leveling the playing field between on-prem data centers and public clouds and businesses finally have a true choice they can exercise based on their business goals. So there's really no shortage of innovation happening at, on the software front for data centers, but fungible starting point really is it's silicon, it's DPU. So what's so special about the DPU? To answer that, Jim, let's take a look at the at technological advances we have had in the last six years. Uh, in 2015, the majority of our networks were one gig. 10 gig was on the horizon and deployed by the larger public data center operators. Uh, from then, what have we done? We have gone from 1 gig to 10 gig to 25 gig to 50 gig to 100 gig and 200 and 400 gig already at the leading edge of the internet revolution. This is a huge transformation in the levels of bandwidth that you are getting out of commodity ethernet infrastructure than what you got six years ago. And you look at the same point in time, processors have hardly grown at all. They're still stuck at the same two, two and a half gigahertz and every generation has given us in good ones, maybe 20% more cores. The gap between networking and the x86 main processor continues to increase, not just uh, incrementally, but by leaps and bounds. In the same period of time, uh, let us take a look at storage. Predominant storage back in 2015 was what? Standard hard disks. And you could hide a lot of software services behind the eight millisecond seek time of a hard disk platter. Uh, fast forward, the six years that we have just gone through, we went from spinning hard disk with eight millisecond latency to SSDs in between, and now NVMe, where you can do IOPS with at 150 to 200 microseconds. This is again a huge switch that has happened in this period of time, leading to modern storage arrays uh, built with software written 20 years ago, unable to handle this kind of performance. This is where Pradeep realized along with Bertrand, right at the very beginning of the curve in 2015, that without new silicon, on-prem data centers would be at a permanent disadvantage. We needed silicon that could handle these kinds of IO workloads. And so I guess this is where the DPU comes in. So tell us, where does the DPU fit in the grand scheme of things? The DPU is a chip that sits at the nexus of storage and networking, both of which are the domains of very high performance uh, increases in the last five years. With the DPU sitting right next to storage, you can now, by being directly connected to storage even, you can now offer storage services directly at line rate. And where are those storage services being de delivered to? They're being delivered to servers connected over a network, which brings us to, to the second part of the DPU. By having networking in the form of ethernet embedded directly into the DPU, it allows us to short circuit the main processor entirely. Effectively, you can provide storage services on one end and then deliver all of those storage IOPS directly onto the network within the DPU itself, bypassing the x86. This offloads expensive x86 cores, essentially by doing all storage and networking operations on the DPU. The second thing, uh, problem that uh, we came across, which required a solution like the DPU to solve, is one of latency and jitter. If you look at uh, Ethernet networks that are the predominant data center network today, uh, they have trouble with noisy neighbors. Uh, as the utilization of the network increases, so does latency, and latency very rapidly tends to infinity. 
more importantly under high load you start seeing big jitter which is variation in latency between one network operation and the next this is where true fabric another core technology of fungible comes in by sitting directly on top of the underlay what true fabric does is it makes ethernet much more uh, friendly towards running under very high utilization predominantly it eliminates jitter and reduces stale latencies to very small numbers even under high load true fabric gives you consistent performance over ethernet and this is fundamental to be able able to deliver operations such as gpu disaggregation where you're picking up a gpu that is sitting on rack 3 and presenting it as a local gpu on rack 1 if you attempted to do that over ethernet today any traffic running over your leaf spine networks that connect the racks together will cause the gpu to drop out because you cannot bound jitter this is what true fabric enables on the top of it the dpu itself is foundational technology now for all of our products is a true fabric proprietary do i need special switches to make it work and and why tcp that's a very good question right um, fundamentally true fabric provides a secure fabric protocol running directly over the underlay ethernet network to optimize across all network flows within the data center it was designed for ease of insertion it doesn't require any special support in ethernet switches or even new ethernet switches with industry standard leaf spine architectures, uh, you can now build full bisection networks that can securely handle data centric workloads at line rate while providing performance guarantees on latency and jitter, thereby eliminating the need for specialized networks. We chose TCP as the underlying fabric protocol for NVMe. Uh, in essence, we do NVMe over TCP. As a core transport layer of the IP stack, um, TCP is well understood uh, and the most widely deployed transport in the last three plus decades. Customers have been asking exactly for this. Give me a converged network that can handle all traffic types while offering the performance guarantees necessary to operate each traffic type efficiently. Ethernet and TCP fit that bill perfectly, building on the successes of each over decades of data center experience. Okay, let's switch over to today's announcement, the Fungible Data Center. What exactly are you announcing? Thank you, Jim. Uh, today, we are announcing the Fungible Data Center, a comprehensive turnkey solution offering secure multi-tenancy and delivering bare metal performance at the cost efficiencies and simplicity of hyperscale data centers. Uh, we believe this will usher in a new paradigm of simplicity, agility, performance, and higher utilization. Thank you, Parda. And what problems does the Fungible Data Center solve? Uh, we set out to tackle a few fundamental problems in this space. Um, the first one is that data center infrastructures today are frustratingly inflexible. Uh, modern application workloads like containers, AI, and analytics applications are very performance hungry and want to wring out the very last ounce of performance that they can get of, out of hardware. So this means running them on bare metal. And because each workload has different hardware requirements, modern data centers end up with a large number of server configurations, or what we uh, commonly call SKUs, uh, servers with local storage, servers without local storage, servers with local storage and GPU, without GPU, and so on. And for all practical purposes, once resources for one of these workloads is procured and deployed, they're immutable. And this causes marooned resource silos in, in the data center. And these marooned resources lead to the second ma major problem with data centers today, that is abysmal levels of utilization. According to some reports, the average utilization of a data center today is less than 20%. And then there is the problem of trading off performance and simplicity. Today, if you want simplicity of management and agility in deploying applications, you have to go down the virtualization route. But virtualization has a huge overhead. Uh, you have to give up on performance that modern workloads just don't want to do. We need both performance and simplicity, so to speak. And finally, there is the evolving security landscape. Until quite recently, the focus of securing a data center was on the perimeter, on protecting the perimeter with robust firewalls and other measures. But there is this new breed of exploits that take advantage of the surface area that is shared by multiple tenants in a data center. What I mean by that is exploits such as Spectre or Rowhammer use a Trojan VM as a vector to compromise VMs of other tenants on the same x86. 
Then there is the other problem where if the OS of the x86 is compromised, it exposes the control plane of storage and data networks underneath. So we need security in isolation uh, to protect against these escalating threats as well. These are certainly very common challenges that we're hearing across the board. So Parda, how does the FDC address these challenges? The Fungible Data Center solves all these problems and more. It solves the balkanization of resources into silos problem by disaggregating and pooling all data center resources, be they servers, storage, networks, GPUs, FPGA accelerators, any such device, and creating the infrastructure a workload needs by composing servers at runtime out of these pools. The beauty of this architecture is that these composed instances can be decomposed and temporarily dehydrated to move the underlying compute server from one idling workload to other hotspots in the data center. This dramatically improves the overall utilization of the data center resources. This just-in-time bare metal composition in the FDC achieves incredible flexibility while providing extremely high performance. So flexibility and performance are no longer a trade-off. And finally, the FDC is designed from the ground up with multi-tenancy, segmentation, and security all built in. The x86 is completely isolated from the control plane, and the host side fungible DPU maintains a secure route of trust and protects the data and control networks from any attacks. So Potter, not everyone is familiar with bare metal composition. Um, can you elaborate perhaps on how that's different from a concept that everyone may be more familiar with, such as uh, virtualization, say? Yes, Roy, thank you for that question. That distinction is very important. In virtualization, we abstract the notion of a server into a virtual machine. A virtual machine has resources like disks, NICs, virtual cores, and memory. However, because all those resources are emulated in software, there is a significant overhead on performance. In contrast, bare metal composition as provided in the FDC abstracts the notion of a server using a physical x86 and presents hardware accelerated volumes and NICs as local PCIe devices to that x86. So FDC provides a few fundamental advantages. One, there are no overheads like we have in virtualization. Everything is in bare metal and hardware accelerated. Two, the composed devices just appear as local PCIe devices to the x86 and are completely transparent to the workloads above. This means the workloads do not have to change in any way. They just run as they do today. Three, the volumes presented as local NVMe disks come with a complete set of storage services like compression, encryption, erasure coding, replication, quality of service, and so on. And Roy, the point about bare metal composition with hardware accelerated storage services is an important one and a very key differentiator between the FDC and other solutions out there. As of today, outside of hyperscalers, we don't know of any solution out there that offers this. So let me ask, um, guys, do you consider the FDC a form of composable disaggregated architecture? Composable infra disaggregated infrastructure or CDI market, right, uh, today includes technologies uh, that compose at many different levels. And we believe that the fungible data center represents the inevitable future of this market. Previously, solutions in CDI sort of fell into two categories of composition. Uh, you could compose at the VM level, where you're using a virtual machine as a container, a software container for physical resources such as CPUs, memory, some persistent storage, access to one or more networks. More recently, people have done such composition instead of at the virtual machine layer, at the container layer. Both of these technologies, though, do composition in software, but the hardware underneath is immutable. That is, you're buying servers that already have all the necessary hardware in order to run that particular workload. The servers themselves are not changing. Physically, the servers are siloed. Now, the last few years, we have seen some new technologies come in in the area of bare metal composition, particularly at the device level. For instance, you have solutions out there where you can start with a server that has CPUs and memory in there and then reach over a custom interconnect uh, such as say PCIe Express um, and present remote physical devices such as physical raw disks or physical raw NICs that are present remotely, reach over the PCI bus to present them as if they were local. 
In essence, now you have composed a server with disks that appear to be local and NICs that appear to be local, but these disks are raw disks coming from a, just a bunch of flash array or a NIC chassis outside. Um, the problem with this approach is that you still have to deliver software services. That is, if I have a raw disk sitting within a server, if that disk fails, I need to have some method for redundancy. So when I do composition at the device level, I have to build software architectures on top that take care of all the other concerns, such as redundancy for storage services, security, uh, data reduction operations like compression, uh, data encryption. And these are implemented in software essentially negating all the performance gains we have gotten over NVMe in the last six years. Our solution is quite different. We compose the way hyperscale operators do. Instead of composing a bare metal server with a raw disk being presented from elsewhere, we compose servers with disks that are not raw disks, but volumes. Volumes that are picked and allocated from a sea of storage. And these volumes already have storage services that are fully hardware accelerated by the fungible DPU. Storage services such as quality of service on a per volume basis, um, such as configurable durability, uh, replication, erasure coding, uh, encryption, compression, thin provisioning, all of this done directly in hardware. And this is presented as a volume. Similarly, we present virtual NICs that are connected to networks that are also composed. What this is, is a server now with the services that workloads expect. And these workloads, whether they be enterprise workloads or whether be, they be cloud workloads, all expect the underlying infrastructure to be reliable. And all of that in, in fungible's ecosystem is accelerated by the fungible DPU directly in hardware. And this represents a fundamental shift in how we do composable disaggregated infrastructure. Because the next level up is, as we go up from composing just a single server, that server is now part of a workload. The workload is likely scale out, which means there are many servers of that type. And that workload belongs to a tenant that is using facilities within a data center. All these layers of the hierarchy have to be thought through and solved for. That is what we attempted to do with the fungible data center. And that is what we believe is the future of where composable disaggregated infrastructure needs to go. So Srini, I understand the uh, differences in implementation, um, but aren't the benefits in the end you know, similar to that of virtualization? That was precisely our goal, Roy. Uh, to deliver what virtualization did in terms of simplicity without any of its performance overhead directly in bare metal hardware. VMs have historically provided a very easy to use abstraction for encapsulating physical resources. You can create VMs. Uh, these VMs have disks associated with them. You can copy them, you can instantiate them, you can delete them, you can move them. Uh, they made our workloads very malleable. And this was in contrast to physical hardware, which after, the day after you bought it uh, and deployed it in your workload, for the next three years it ran as part of the workload with no change. What we wanted to do was make physical hardware behave the same way that VMs did because the simplicity of VMs is what gave them their power in the market and led them to dominate both on-prem data centers as well as the public cloud where it is the backbone. By enabling the next generation of bare metal systems to provide these capabilities, we are providing the simplicity of virtualization without any of its overhead. Thanks, Srini. Okay, Parda, when you're talking about the technical challenges that FDC addresses, who are your target customers? Jim, we designed the FDC to support customers ranging from cloud providers to enterprises to research labs and universities. For our cloud provider customers, FDC brings all the hyperscale advantages by optimizing for higher utilization, performance, power, footprint, cost, ease of IT management, and robust security. For our enterprise customers, the FDC provides an easy to use and cost effective solution for creating on-premises infrastructure as service offerings. They can now get the highest performance possible at any scale they need, all the while keeping the cost down. And they can rest assured that any future workload will be supported. Past decisions no longer constrain future options. And for our research lab and university customers, we offer flexibility, predictability, and reliability that is also very easy to manage. 
That's a great segue into my next question, which is really about the market or how does Fungible come to the market without having to convince customers to start from scratch and build an entirely new data center. So let's talk about the very large data center opportunity first. These are data centers that are operated by cloud providers or perhaps telcos, large organizations that maybe even have their own budget for developing technologies in-house. So they are open to experimenting with new architectures. However, naturally they have risks that they have to mitigate and they don't want to do something that's going to be disruptive to their existing operations. So how does Fungible go about inserting itself into that kind of opportunity? The thing to note here, Jim, is the carrier and cloud operator data segment is looking for the same benefits that hyperscale operators today enjoy. In many cases, they compete against them and they don't have the luxury of custom silicon to help them in their fight. What cloud operators have historically been looking for as they compete against the hyperscale operators is to get better utilization, better agility, better security, and even better performance in order to get the kinds of ROI that they need to get with a solution that enables them to compete against the hyperscalers. So what is our path to insertion over here? A path to insertion is fairly straightforward. The fact that we are completely workload transparent allows us to pick any workload where they are running into performance bottlenecks today and start with a POC or a proof of concept to showcase the capabilities of FDC in that particular segment. But as we do this, what we are building is a standardized data center infrastructure starting at a very small scale, maybe half a rack or one rack worth of equipment. But given the massive benefits that we offer both in agility, performance, security and simplicity, we expect more than one workload to get deployed on it and the system to be able to show its benefits quite rapidly. And then we would scale from there into a pilot deployment before heading towards a rollout across data centers. As you pointed out, Jim, uh, cloud uh, data center operators tend to be more experimental. They do need to manage their risk, but it, this insertion strategy gives them a way to gradually increase their exposure to FDC and then use it and scale it as they see fit. Are there any workloads that you see cloud operators or telcos running today that would be especially well suited for deployment in a fungible data center? Carrier and cloud service segment, the first workloads we would look at are ones where they get significant benefit from more than one aspect or more than one axis of what the DPO operates in. So the first class of applications would likely be performance and or data centric applications where we can provide gains that are many times what are available in infrastructures today. So these would include uh, applications uh, in the AI and machine learning space, in the big data space, particularly analytics, uh, in some areas, uh, in the cloud, uh, in edge IoT applications, particularly wireless and 5G termination. Enterprise data centers certainly have considerable budgets, but these types of customers are going to have a different risk profile and they're not going to want to do anything at all that's going to be disruptive. And most importantly, they're going to need a very strong return on investment. So how does Fungible go about entering that kind of opportunity? That's a great question, Jim. Uh, enterprises, as you pointed out, do tend to have legacy. And if you look at the history, at least for certain sets of enterprises, applications that were easily movable to the public cloud ended up moving to the public cloud because of the complexity of their on-prem data centers. So that leaves behind even further legacy applications and enterprise data centers. So how exactly do we break into something like this? The first thing to note is many of the applications that are running on enterprise data centers that continue to have a future within on-prem data centers tend to have significant data security requirements. There are entire segments of, of uh, enterprise, uh, such as banking, insurance, uh, uh, cutting edge research labs, particularly in pharma, for whom their data is their crown jewel and they have to protect it as best as they can with their on-prem security controls. FDC provides them a mechanism to get the simplicity, agility, utilization benefits of what the public data center operators can offer now within their own data center, which is the a business now gets a real choice between running those applications they really need to run on-prem and any other applications they need to run in the public cloud in the public cloud. So how do we insert into this? 
The simplest mechanism over here is to start with one or more applications of theirs and deploy them within our infrastructure at a very small scale. Start at half a rack uh, kind of numbers. Here, the risk is very low in such an approach. Why? You're using industry standard servers, industry standard networks over here. Uh, and should the risk not pay out uh, for you, you can very easily decompose that and reuse the infrastructure anywhere else you wish. So this gives them an easy exit point also as they are trying out a technology. But our belief is that most fundamentally, this technology, by the fact that it is transparent to your workload, benefits everything that is currently running within the current, uh, within an on-prem data center without requiring any changes to their applications. So you can try it out quickly. If this works, bring your next workload in. Now you're starting to run to the limits of the systems that you have purchased. Now you can step up to the next level. So we expect to come in during workload refresh. During, and in enterprise data centers, workloads typically have their own set of servers that age out at different points during the year. So find the right workload during the point of the year when there is a refresh cycle coming in, refresh it with a small FDC stack and then start growing on that FD stack, FDC stack because every next workload that you're running would be capable of running directly on this faster and better just by scaling. A third type of opportunity is really the HPC or high performance clusters where performance is really key for AI or ML workloads. Um, of course, these types of environments would stick with what they've got unless there's a really great insertion point. So how does Fungible address that opportunity? Excellent. So for them, um, but the the the, uh, gym, the market that is high performance computing, uh, it's a market long time ago that I used to be in. Uh, here, historically, all our systems have been bare metal. Our workloads have been cutting edge, uh, in many cases, experimental. Here, the insertion, uh, interestingly enough, is along a, a separate axis that is not there in the others. Uh, many of our uh, uh, customers that are in the HPC segment uh, behave as partners because they are extending our solution by accelerating things in the DPU that hitherto had to be done in the CPU at absolute bleeding edge of fast data centric workloads. So for them, the insertion point is uh, quite simple. There is quite literally no other technology out in the market that is capable of doing what a DPU enabled server is capable of doing within FDC with our storage. It enables entirely new areas for customers, such as computational storage, where they can offload a lot of the operations that they do today in their HPC workloads directly onto the storage array thereby letting the storage array itself act as a mechanism that filters data for you. Uh, it is techniques like this that are of great interest uh, to the HPC community. And that is where the insertion point comes in for us. Workloads that are on the bleeding edge that are being custom written and accelerated on the DPO. All right, let's switch and uh, talk about software, the software part of the FDC solution. Um, in this case, the Fungible Data Center Composer. So if you could talk us through the unique innovations in uh, the data center composer, that I think would be pretty helpful. Oh, there are so many areas of the FDC that are packed with significant innovations, Roy. I will highlight three of them here. The first one is how, for the first time, we get the flexibility, manageability, and ease of use that used to be exclusively provided by virtualization technologies, now directly at the bare metal layer all without any of the virtualization performance overheads. In fact, what the FDC does is not just bare metal. It is better than bare metal because the composed resources come with hardware accelerated services like compression, encryption, replication, and erasure coding. The second unique capability of the FDC is its ability to do real-time load balancing of resource allocations. Imagine a typical data center situation where one application workload with a particular server geometry is running at peak capacity and could use more resources, while there are other application clusters of other server geometries that are idling and barely using theirs. To handle such imbalances, FDC allows the temporary removal of the physical server attached to a workload while preserving the entire state, meaning the disks, NIC IP addresses, MAC addresses, etc., and moving that server to another workload that needs additional compute capacity. This 
So-called thin provisioning of servers can be done to chase hotspots anywhere in the data center, dramatically improving utilization. And the third innovation I will highlight is our True Fabric technology that enables the FDC to provide all these capabilities at any scale. True Fabric provides a consistent tail latency profile even at extremely high network saturation levels. It allows us to present GPUs and other devices as local to the x86 from any rack anywhere in the data center. So unlimited scale without compromising on the best in class performance of the fungible DPUs. So let's talk about what's on the horizon. Clearly you guys are not gonna just stop here. Um, so we talked a bit about GPU earlier. Could you let us know what the state of this aggregation around GPUs are and perhaps comment on uh, memory as well? Do you see this aggregating that down the road as well? So we are looking at GPU disaggregation, uh, where we encapsulate PCIe transactions over Ethernet and switch it using a virtual PCIe switch. This enables us to disaggregate GPU sitting in a GPU server chassis uh, powered by a fungible DPU to be presented to any other server in any other rack, uh, data center wide, where it appears as a local PCIe GPU. And we can do this with marginal overhead. Uh, this has big implications for GPU accelerated workloads that can now run anywhere and borrow GPUs as needed from a pool instead of buying high power servers with embedded GPUs and creating yet another inefficiently used silo. In terms of memory, Roy, um, given the current latency constraints at around 100 nanoseconds or lower, main memory is likely to remain physically connected to the CPUs in the near future. However, memory technology devices, particularly intermediate scale memory around the one microsecond regime, uh, are happening at the rack level and become another emerging frontier of interest, which deepens the memory hierarchy now to include RAM within the server, rack level memory, and then fast low latency storage like NVMe. So now you have a continuum in memory. This is just the beginning of our journey. Uh, the fungible DPU has a lot more potential than what we are exploiting currently. Being programmable, it has very long legs technologically. We are looking forward to several years of innovation ahead of us. Thanks Srini and Pada for doing this deep dive conversation today with Jim and me. We're definitely looking forward to learning more as you guys roll out the Fungible Data Center.